dance in the night. Have you ever been kissed on a typical tropical night? Have you ever been kissed while the warm spot insists on your side? What a thrilling night. Americano women take you away from me. You mean more to me than anything in the world. I have hardly known you but an hour. You may kiss my hand, and tomorrow perhaps you may kiss me. Until tomorrow. the officer. Zara, you're doing pretty good for yourself. I thought I told you to leave that key the last time you were here. You do not think you can discard Rico so easily, do you? Well, if necessary, I'll have to do it the hard way. Rico, you're through. Through as an old tomato can. That is it, huh? Well, I am not going to give you up. Now or ever. Don't be stupid. You'll take my advice, you'll go back to your wife while you're still in good condition. Uh, that is fine advice after you have spoiled me for all the other women. You were spoiled when I got you. Women have pampered you all your life. Rico, you're no good. Besides, you lied to me. You said you were single. And I loathe liars. No man can support a wife and me at the same time. Someone's going to get the short end of the deal, and honey, it's never me. Well, where is that man, that, that officer? He left. He had to leave sometime. Oh, uh, you sent him away? No, he left under his own power. Look at me! Don't louse me up. Give me a light. Listen, Rico, where I come from, they call this pulling a fast one on you. Giving you the business. Why don't you make yourself scarce? Because I'm better with myself. Very well, Chiquita. Let us make an end. An end for the two of us. Well, what do you mean? If I cannot hold you in my arms any longer, no one else will ever get the chance. Well, why don't you shoot? No, you can't do it. No, you can't. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? That's what I am trying to figure out. Oh, oh, my darling, I love you. I love you. Dara, who is this? Who is this man? Why, I've never seen a man before in all my life. Why, Zara. Get out of here. Very well, I will go. Let me tell you something. She will do the same thing to you as she has done to me. Get out. What was that man doing here? Philip. Philip, darling, I... You haven't answered me. Why did you come? I told you. I love you. How can you expect me to stay away? Day after day I waited for you, and when you didn't come, I... Zara, darling, why do you stare at me like that? Surely this man hadn't... Zara. It's true, Philip. 
I don't ask forgiveness. I'm not worthy of it. But when you're gone, remember me kindly sometimes for just a brief moment. When April comes around again with its blue skies and sudden showers, remember that April woman who drifted into your life as casually as a summer cloud drifts over a green field and then drifts on again. Now go, Philip. Go. We have persuaded one of the most glamorous personalities of the screen to come here so that you, in the spirit that is characteristic of you, may pay tribute in person to what you have heretofore only seen on the screen. I have the honor and the distinct pleasure of presenting the reigning queen of the cinema, Miss Marvis Arden. <laughs> kindly for just a brief moment when April comes around again with its blue skies and sudden showers. Remember that April woman who drifted into your life as casually as a summer cloud drifts over a green field and then drifts on again. And that, my dear friends, was the drifting lady, but it was not, please believe me, it was not the real Martha Sarden. I often say to my producer, Mr. A.K. Greenfield, President of Superfine Pictures Incorporated, A.K., I say, I always call him A.K. I says to him, I say, A.K., please, oh, please let me play a part that expresses the real me. A simple, unaffected country girl who finds her happiness in a garden and a swimming pool. But Mr. Greenfield always says, no, no, Marvis, you are a great artist, and it wouldn't be fair to deprive the world of your genius. So that is why I play these fascinating sirens you seem to like to see. But, oh. I'm such a different person, really. Beneath all this glitter, Marvis Arden is a very human person like yourselves. If you, my dear public, could only come up and see me in my little Italian villa in Hollywood, I'm sure you'd be disappointed in the dullness and simplicity of my life there. I know it's cruel to disillusion you this way, but I have to be honest, and you must take it in the right spirit. And now, my dear friends, I want to thank you for your kind appreciation and accept through me the thanks of my dear producer, A.K. Greenfield, president of Superfine Pictures Incorporated. Great fella. And now, my dear friends, I want to say good night. A thousand good nights. And tell all your friends I said good night. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen, but Miss Arden cannot see all of you. Her time will not permit. You may go in, my friend. And you? And you? Now, why all those old guys? Why not some of those good looking ones? It's part of my contract, young fellow. Miss Arden isn't supposed to marry for five years. Why make the job tough for her? Okay, you, sir. I'm sorry, but Miss Arden. I'm Francis X. Harrigan. <laughs> That's too bad. I beg your pardon. Well, we handle Miss Arden's admirers alphabetically. I'm just now getting into the bees. It's rather a novel idea. I'll wait. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks. That's fine. You were a big hit tonight, Miss Arden. Yes, there was a great crowd out there, full of politicians. I felt I was putting a bill before Congress. Let them in. I just heard from A.K., your dear producer. What have I done now? What's he sore about? Nothing. And incidentally, I've never noticed his being sore at you. Well, Perhaps that's why he's the producer and you're just the press agent. You mean I am practically your slave? You are not. Slaves are generally useful. Your next personal appearance at Harrisburg ends the tour. Then back to Hollywood. Back to your Italian villa. 
I tell you at every performance, it's Italian. They can't spell it. How do you expect me to pronounce it? We'll be leaving for Harrisburg in an hour. You'd better hurry with your packing, Jeanette. The car will be right down at the station. Oh, no, we're not. I'm going out tonight with a friend of mine. With whom? Harrigan. He's running for Congress. I haven't seen him since I played Chicago with the Follies. Oh, no, you don't. Now, wait a minute. Every time I make a date, we're either leaving town or rehearsing or something. Jeanette, give me my black gown. Yes. My job is to keep you stainless as a lily. And I don't mean a tiger lily, either. This one here? Yes. Oh, but why don't you wear that white gown? I said the black one. I think you're lovely in that white one. Now, listen, when I say... Oh, I am, huh? All right, the white one. Where are you going with that ward healer? To the palace roof, and don't you be a heel. Don't worry, we won't even be seen. I'll get a private dining room or something. Then I say you won't. I'm running this show, and I'm running it till the tour is over. You're not going to hand me the same bill of goods you handed your last manager. Well, what are you going to do about it? Phone Greenfield. Tell him what I think about you. And if you don't think, I'll tell him. Hello? Get me Hollywood, California. Granite, three, two hundred. Mr. Greenfield, you're a great star and can't risk a scandal. Your private life has got to be an open book. It is. I'm just looking for someone to read it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Mr. Greenfield? This is Morgan, A.K. I'm in Washington. Listen, I've got some bad news for you. Your favorite star is about to step out with some politician here. I tried to keep her out of the limelight with men. If she doesn't do what I tell her, you cancel her contract. That right? Right. You don't think I won't. Right. Right hand man, huh? Right, right, right. Say, I could have you fired like that. You know, if that's the way you feel about it, why don't you? I don't know. I talked it over with myself last night and we both went to sleep. Say, haven't you got some letters to write or something? Good idea. The wire at AK wouldn't hurt a bit. Oh, do that. It'll keep you amused. I could like that guy if he wasn't so hard to get along with. Alice? Made a tea, please. Yes, thanks. Marvis, this is a positive thrill. I always say a thrill a day keeps the chill away. <laughs> uh, hello. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Francis X. Harrigan. I'd like a quiet little table on the roof for tonight. Just two. And alone, you know, seclusive. Some place where we'll be alone. Hello. Hello, Amalgamated Press? Well, listen. Marvis Arden is the guest of Nominee Harrigan at the Palace Roof tonight. The press is invited. Hello, operator. And the repertorial staff of the Union News Service is invited. Palace Roof. Okay, we'll cover the story. Hello, Paramount News. Oh, here's a hot one for you. Marvis Arden, the movie star, and Francis X. Harrigan are inviting the press to meet in the Palace Roof tonight. You ought to get some great pictures. Well, I'll say one thing for these stars. They're not under contract. They can stay out as long as they want. It's great to be with you again, Marvis, darling. I haven't had much time for romance since I last saw you. I've devoted myself entirely to my career. So have I. But sometimes I do hear the call of the irresistible. Don't you? Yes, but in two hours you'll be on your way to Harrisburg. Going out of my life again. That's in two hours from now. Seems to tell me I'll be going to Harrisburg. Oh, 
phone me before you leave, or I'll be stopping at the Penn House Hotel. No, darling. I know nothing. You tell me. That's mine. Now, will you give us one with your arms around the massage? What is this? What is this? Did you? No, did you? How about a story for my paper? How long do you know Mr. Harrigan, Miss Harrigan? What is going to happen, Miss Harrigan? Happen? Why, nothing's going to happen. Mr. Harrigan and I are friends, just friends, aren't we, honey? Uh, Mr. Harrigan. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. I was just recalling the time in Chicago that... Well, I don't really believe the public would be interested in that, Miss Harrigan. What? Not interested in politics? Oh, no, Miss Harrigan, I was only jesting. Uh, give us a break here, will you, Okay. You any particular platform, Miss Arden? Well, the one I act on. <laughs> well, haven't you any political views? Well, uh, let me see. I uh, really... Well, of course you have, Morris. Tell her the one about more marriages. You know. Tell her that one. Mm, just a mouse studying to be a rat. What a platform. Marriages? Sure, let's have it. Yeah, tell us the whole story, Miss Arden. Don't crowd me, boys. Don't crowd me. What I think the country needs is more marriages, more happy homes. Look at the millions of lovely girls wasting their lives in factory shops, offices, and restaurants just because millions of men can't afford to marry them. When April comes around again with its blue skies and... What's going to become of the country? Yeah, but what can be done about it, Miss Arden? The state should make it possible for them to marry. Endow matrimony the same as we endow hospitals and colleges. Give every unmarried girl a dowry and provide every young couple with a home, furniture, radio, and Italian villa. And a baby grain? Well, that depends whether you can play or not. Well, but Miss Arden, I don't think oh, that... Uh... Sorry, you take him, boys. He knows his campaign better than I do. Pardon me, boys. <laughs> All right. See you later, boys. Is that going to be your campaign, Mr. Harrigan? Do you agree with Miss Arden? Well, uh, I... Uh, Mr. Harrigan, can we quote you in connection with Miss Arden's statement? Well, well, of course, I think that... Uh, well, as my constituents have so often said, I feel that I... Laugh that off. I, uh, I hope the interview was satisfactory, gentlemen. Marvis Arden advocates increased matrimony. Francis X. Harrigan endorses her views. People will think I've gone crazy. Hollywood and Washington unite in launching new campaign. Great grief. And then these pictures of us taken together. I'm ruined. Cummings, I want you to take a letter and protest at once. Send it to all the newspapers. Yes, sir. Well, let me see. Um, uh, to the editor. Dear sir, in the interest of justice, I must protest against the misleading statements that have been printed about Miss Marvis Arden and myself. Why, Francis, you old fox. What do you mean, old fox? I suppose you've seen the papers about you and Miss Arden. I certainly have. I suppose everybody's seen the papers. And if you think you can come here and gloat over me, Andy Kelton. What do you mean, gloat over you? I suppose you're going to try and pretend that you didn't realize what you were doing. But you can't fool me. It's the cleverest political move you ever made, Francis X. Harrigan. Cleverest? Why, the old maid school teachers vote alone is enough to swing a presidential election. Well, of course. And I... with Marvis Arden behind you with her national reputation, why say? Well, I, I'm glad you approve of my little plan, Andy. Excuse me, sir. If you want this letter to the newspapers, get off in the next mail. Uh, never mind that letter. Cancel the letter. Have my bags packed right away. Yes, sir. Uh, and remind me to call the Penn Harris Hotel at 8 o'clock. Yes, sir. You going away, Francis? Yes, I have got a little business in Harrisburg that I have to take care of. More marriages. <laughs> Not a bad idea, is that? Find out what's wrong with this silver-plated perambulator? I did. I couldn't fix it. She's got the tube box full of hair wash and cold cream. Careful, my man. Surely you don't expect the talk of the talkies to ride around the country in a common domestic model. What would her public say? Then they should have imported an interpreter for the car. Intolerable. Simply intolerable. This is a fine state of affairs. A case you'll hear of this, I promise you. 
He pays you all exorbitant salaries for the sole purpose of protecting me against these petty annoyances, and this is the result. I pay $20,000 for a car, have it made to order, a pulse to order, design the color scheme myself, and now it won't go. What's the matter with this screwy thing? I don't know. He don't know. Don't know, but you must know. I pay you to know. I never heard of anything so in intolerable. Intolerable. Don't interrupt. And what are you going to do? Just stand idly by? No, I'm not standing idly by. I'm looking for a place to telephone. Telephone? You ask me, you frame this thing yourself. But, Mr. Morgan, you you're not... stay with the car. Five years of age, she would get so much money. She? Don't I count? But you're a man. That ain't my fault. Sounds to me like a play for publicity. Didn't she do that in another picture? <coughs> I pretty near swear I'd seen her in that same thing before. She was a South Sea native or something. Oh, no, Miss Kate, she never played anything like this before. Well, all right. Then what happened? And then she's on a yacht with a rich banker. I, I don't know how she met him. You know how they cut pictures these days. But anyhow, he keeps pestering her, so she stabs him. Impulsive, I'd call her. Oh, it was wonderful, Miss Kate. And then when Miss Arden made her personal appearance, my goodness me, I thought my heart was just going to stop. You know, Movie Man magazine gave her first place last month in the It contest. It. Thank goodness I was born before the days of movies and It. Well, didn't they even have It then? They had it all right, but they didn't photograph it and put it to music. My eggs. I want my eggs. You understand? Oh, Professor Rigby, I'm so sorry. Ah! Oh, you have stuck yourself a duck, you old fuss budget. They're looking at me. What did you say, sir? They're looking at me. I ordered them turned over. You heard what I said. Mrs. Struthers. Oh. oh. Mrs. Struthers. Mrs. Struthers. I'm so sorry, Herbert. Mrs. Struthers, I'm the oldest boarder here, and they're taking advantage of the fact. What was the trouble, Herbert? That's the trouble. They're staring at me. Oh, now, Gladys, you know that oh, Mr. Rigby doesn't... I'll have them fixed right away, yes. If she went to bed nights instead of running around with that muscle-bound flight belt and... <laughs> What's stirring? Oh, no, sister. Oh, quit bowling, then. Can you put Mr. Rigby talking to Mrs. Strother in the bar? Let him talk. <laughs> Gladys, now see here, Eddie. Keep your plate, please. I can't have a star border like Mr. Rigby upset because one of my employees wants to waste her time talking about a mere movie star. No. Mere? Why, the papers are full of them. And who cares? Be here, Gladys. I will not tolerate delays with my borders just because you want to stand around talking about a public figure. Public figure? Nobody's public that wants babies. Catherine! Oh, shucks. Sure. She just got through telling me things I never knew myself. Go on, get some coffee before he yells himself at us. <laughs> nothing seems to matter to you these days. Your home, your social standing, your pride, nothing. What pride? What social position? We're running a boarding house, ain't we? I think that's very unfair, Catherine. It's an economic condition solely. Why, do you think that for one moment, if I had any money, I'd allow Bud Norton to have that disgraceful gasoline station in front of a home that once entertained the leading socialite in Pennsylvania? <laughs> oh, you and your moss-bound ideas. Aunt Kate, you mustn't talk to Mother like that. Oh, it's all right, my dear. Nobody cares about me, what I think or what I do. It's all right. 
I leave you two alone for a minute and bang, you're at it again. Well, for Bud helping us out with this filling station, it would be pretty hard going for us, I can tell you. Oh, I don't know. You don't know? Then what are you hanging around him for? <laughs> you goose. <laughs> Why do you suppose? We'll be able to send for the car right away, sir. We just fixed the truck. It's working swell now. Good. Now, may I use your telephone? Sorry, sir. It's out of order. How far is it to Harrisburg? 90 miles. Well, isn't that just dandy? No phone? 90 miles? I've got a personal appearance with Miss Arden at eight. You mean, is Miss Arden in that broken down car? I hope. You mean Miss Barbie Arden, the great movie star? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, boy. Micodema! I was just trying to pick up the oboes. I know them. They're all oboes. Hmm. Jack Benny had that joke Sunday night. <laughs> Something I can do for you? Are you the uh, proprietors? No. Just Aunt Kate. Addie! Addie! Sorry, Catherine. Can we stay here while our car is being fixed? <laughs> There's a lot to be said for the old horse and buggy yet, ain't there? <laughs> <laughs> you said it. May I? If it's a good cigar, you may. Folks around here smoke whip handles. <laughs> Addie, this gentleman wants to know if his party can stay here till he gets his car fixed. Why, yes, yes, of course. I have Miss Arden, the movie star. Marvis Arden? Movie star? Gladys! There's another hotel uh, down the road about a mile. Oh, nonsense, Catherine. Marvis Arden, the movie star, in person. I'm positively thrilled. And we've just the room for her, with the loveliest petunias growing outside the window, and a beautiful hand-carved bed brought from England by my grandfather. <laughs> you see, I'm really not a boarding house mistress. <laughs> An economic condition. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just get the room ready. Come on, come, Gladys. Are you Mr. Arden? No, no, my name is Morgan. Morgan? Not by any chance. No chance whatsoever. J.P. and I come from two distinct families. Officially, I'm Miss Arden's counsel for public relations. Yeah, I expect she has a good many, too. Well, I can see that you aren't exactly buried out here in the country, are you? No, just waiting around to be, I guess. <laughs> now, tell me what a public relations, whatever it is, really is. Well, I believe I'm the last one in captivity. You see, Miss Arden is uh, very attractive and uh, temperamental. Yes, I read somewhere that she was very susceptible. Yes, well, that's one name for it. So the studio sends me along to see that she doesn't suscept too easily. Oh, yes. You see, Miss Arden's contract won't permit her to marry for five years. My job is to see that she doesn't break that contract. <laughs> Lucky you have a sense of humor. Humor and patience and... A knowledge of the alienation of affection laws of every state. You don't The rooms say. are ready now, in case you'd like to look at them. Excuse me. Hey, you come on, fix this, will you? Well, if this ain't a surprise, who'd have thought I was going to see you again, right here, face to face? Boy, you were swell in that show last night, Miss Arden. Boy, you sure were. And were you grand and puzzled peacocks? Oh, gee, oh, gosh. Oh, gee, oh, gosh. Don't you think we could discuss this better after you get us out of here? Say, we sure could, Miss Clyde. Miss Clyde. And I'm getting amongst one another. Well, we're glad to be glad when she hears about this. Come on. Big cake. 
cave scene. Boy, was I scared. I thought they were going to kidnap you, sure. And I bet there would or two if it hadn't have been for Gee. him. Hello, Joe. Miss Barbara Sarden, the big movie actress. She's back there in the car. You mean the one in that picture loves to shut the selfie string? Yeah, that's the one. Hiya, Bill. Barbara Sarden, big movie star. What's the big movie star? People? Radio for change. They're coming. They're coming, Tommy. They're coming down the road, Tommy. Come on, here comes Barbara Sides. Come on, everybody. In my time, women with hair like that didn't come outside in the daylight. Right, when he said we're making pictures for a lot of maroons. We welcome you, Miss Arden. We hope your stay at the Haven will be a happy one. Oh, I'm sure it will be. If I could just have a moment's rest, then I'd be so glad to meet my public. Come, Morgan. Marvis, please. Don't please me. You think I'd have walked six miles? Well, what am I supposed to do? Sit around this terrible dump? Why, a ghost would be willing to haunt this place for nothing. I wouldn't stay here if it was embroidered in jewels. Oh, my dear, I'm sure you don't want the good people to get the wrong impression of you. Oh, my dear, dear friends, what must you think of me? My tragic, tragic temperament. This tour has been just one intolerable thing after another. And we artists, we artistes, we live on our emotions, you know. How true. Hmm. You must forgive me. Why? That's all right. I've been sort of on edge myself today. I assure you, I had no intentions of casting uh, Aspersions. Aspersions on your lovely home here. No, indeed. Miss Arden is quite overcome by it. Why, it's charming, but too, too charming. And your interior is just as picturesque as your ulterior. Uh, Miss Arden has had a very trying day, and... Uh... Well, let me get you a nice hot cup of tea. Tea? Yes, you know, tea. Oh, tea. Oh, that would be simply divine, but I don't want to put you in any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all, my dear. No trouble at all. Let us get Miss Arden a cup of tea. Oh. Well, hurry up. Oh, yes. Charming girl. Um, uh, Miss Arden, I want you to know uh, Mrs. Struthers and, uh, and Aunt Kate. Mrs. Uh... Miss, young man, Miss Kate Barnaby. I'm glad to meet you. This is my great niece, Joyce. Miss Arden, this is indeed thrilling. Thank you so much. It's all so lovely, so very lovely. I've often said to my producer, A.K. Greenfield, president of Superfine Pictures Incorporated, you know, A.K., I said, if I ever build another house, it's going to be one of those simple little colonial cottages just like this one here of yours. That's exactly what I want. Oh, Miss Arden, thank you. Thank you so much. And I have a lovely quiet room with a nice soft bed and a private bath for you. Why don't you go up and lie down, and I'll serve your tea up there. Then you can drink it in comfort and have a nice rest. Your maid's taken your things up already. Oh, she has, has she? Well, it does sound tempting, just to relax for a tiny moment. And now, if you'll allow me to talk to Mr. Morgan alone, please, for just a moment. Why, of course. Come along, Joyce, Catherine. No, don't get sore, Marvis. You think I'd have framed that marathon for myself? Well, you jump off a ten-story building into a bottle of ink if you thought you could keep me from getting to Harrisburg tonight. You figure I got a lot of phone calls coming in, you think I'm going to meet that guy Harrigan. Well, I am. I'm going to meet him if I have to fly there. Well, that's one way your public hasn't seen you. Don't be funny. I'll empty that. Just put it under. Yes. 
you. Okay. Mm, what large and sinewy muscles. Where's that room they got here for me? And I got here before I discovered I left my briefcase in Washington. If you'll go get it, I'll see to it that it's worth your while. Sure, Mr. Morgan. Boy, you don't know how you make me feel. Let him in. Yes, my mother. Marvis, you look charming. So am I always? Yes, but particularly so now. I suppose it's the country air. Mm. Well, we'll be leaving in the morning. Why the hurry? I like it here. In fact, my type should get better acquainted with farm life. And here's something else that may upset your plans a bit. The young man you saw through the window, the young man with the large and the sinewy muscles, has just left for Washington. Why, you cheap... Keep it up. I'd like these country folk to get a load of their favorite star in action. Uh, Clyde just got back from Gettysburg with the Corps, Mr. Morgan. And I, I thought, thought you went to Washington. I intended to, but Clyde wanted to go, so I sent him. Would you mind coming down to the Corps? Yes, and as far as I'm concerned, Morgan, you can keep going down and down and down. Miss Arden's in her room, I suppose. Yes, sir. She's gone upstairs to rest. If I were you, I'd try to discourage any ideas she may have of coming outside. The people here tell me that the weather has been terrible for colds, and uh, I wouldn't want Miss Arden to injure her voice. You understand? Yes, I think I do, sir. I thought you would. Thank you, sir. I think it's practically a miracle that you're right here in this very room, and I saw you only last night in Washington. It's the most thrilling thing that's ever happened to me. Really? Well, that's very sweet of you. You say uh, he owns the gasoline station? Yes, and he helps support the house, too. Married, I suppose. Well, not yet he isn't, but well, I... Further talk would be a waste of time. I beg your pardon, ma'am? Oh, I was just saying, if you'll uh, just sit down the tea, I'll try and drink it. <laughs> oh, how silly of me standing here holding this tray all this time. Well, you must think I'm an awful ninny. <laughs> No, my dear, not at all. Shall I pour it for you? No, I'm quite capable of doing that myself. Uh, you've been very good to me now. <laughs> Miss Arden, I, I promised I wouldn't annoy you, but, but I was wondering, would you be kind enough to do something? Autograph a picture? Well, yes. Well, how did you guess? I sort of sensed it. Uh, one sense has become very keen in my profession. I've got a beautiful picture of you over in my room. I'll run and get it. Lovely, but don't run, my dear. You might fall and get hurt. I'll be here for some time, I'm afraid. Oh, this is wonderful. Golly! She told me if I'd bring her some tea this afternoon, she'd give me an autographed picture. Just think of that, Joyce. An autographed picture for Miss Arden. Why don't you get a block of fresh cement? Maybe you could get her footprints. Oh, you mean like at Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood? I read about that. Well, do you think she would? <laughs> no, silly. I was only joking. How does it look? Oh, Joyce, that's lovely. My sister will be crazy about it. Say, do you know this morning she told me that she's going to name the baby after Miss Arden? Marvis Deckett. Isn't that too cutting for words? Why don't you go on and get your dishes done? All right, Joyce. Mr. Morgan. 
Morgan. Eh? Do you think there's a chance for me in the moving picture business? Well, I don't know. I uh, understand that um, Super Fine Pictures Incorporated is looking for a new stenographer. Well, I don't know how to typewrite. I only got as far as six feet. Oh, well, then, of course, you want to be an actress. Oh, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan, now look. I've got it. Baby Leroy. Oh, no. Zizou Pitts. Oh, now, Mr. Morgan, you're just teasing me. I can't take off Zizou, but that was Marlene Dietrich. Oh, I see. Can you take off the four Marx Brothers? You mean all at once? Well, mm -hmm. gradually, if it'll be any easier for you. No, but I can practice. That's fine. You practice very hard, and then maybe I'll talk to you again before we leave for Hollywood. Morgan, I'm sorry, but Miss Arden. She has, huh? Not yet, but she's going to. I told her about the weather, and she said I wouldn't bother her any, because she was much better at pantomime anyhow. She's using pantomime, eh? Nice and cool this afternoon. Is it? I'm sorry I don't carry spare parts. But of course not. I wouldn't expect you to. I'm terribly grateful for what you've done. But what a... Oh, that's all right. It's really an honor, you know, to be of service to you. You think so? Oh, that's sweet. Real sweet. <laughs> you know, uh, you remind me of someone I know. I do? Just who is it? Well, I have a brother in York. Lots of people get us mixed up. His name's Ed, Ed Norton. No, I've never been in New York. Uh, have you ever been in Hollywood? Hollywood? No, but I'd sure like to go. Why? You mean you'd like to get in pictures? Acting? Yes. No, it's the mechanical part of the movies that interests me. How they hitch up the sound of pictures and all the technical detail. Yes, it's marvelous. But too, too marvelous. Yeah. Well, I think I could do it a whole lot better. Is that so? You see, I've always been crazy about machinery. Autos, radios, and all that junk. You know. Put things together and take them apart. Yes, oh, like Einstein. Oh, I'm not that good, no. You never know. <laughs> I've been working on a new principle of sound recording, and I think I got something. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's lovely. What is it? Oh, it's probably not worth a dawn. Now, don't be modest. Modesty never gets you anything. I know. <laughs> now, show it to me. It's all pretty technical. I'm afraid you wouldn't understand. You don't know what an understanding person I can be, especially when it's... Uh, in connection with uh, pictures. Why, it's my life. Now, won't you tell me? Of course, you know the principle of synchronization of sound in pictures. Alternating currents of light that vary with the intensity of electrons. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes, indeed. Good. Now, my idea is to utilize the theory of the stroboscope. The uh, what? The stroboscope. Oh, yes, of course. That is, the loudspeaker makes one vibration for every time light passes the photocell could use an oscilloscope for that. Why not? No reason at all, you could. That would take care of the rotating, vibrating, or oscillating movements, which we have to blur under direct illumination. I think this sketch shows it plainly. Oh, you draw beautifully. <laughs> well, this is just rough. Mm -hmm. uh, now look here. You see this line here represents the direction of the light ray. Yeah, uh, it's a cunning little line, isn't it? And uh, where these two lines cross... You know, uh, you have beautiful hair for a man. Well, uh, it's thick anyway. Wash it a lot. That's a secret. They tell you not to wash it, but that's an exploded theory. Oh. And uh, where these two lines uh, cross, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's hard to explain on paper. Uh, Why? You're doing beautifully. I couldn't draw a straight line myself. I tell you, uh, I, uh, I got a model in, in the white shop, one I've been working on, if you'd like to see that. Oh, uh, in the workshop, huh? Oh, I'd just love to see your model.
One hears such terrible things about these movie actresses. But I saw at once that she was a real lady. Bah! Is this workshop very far away? Not that it matters. It's like a door walking in the country. No, it's just a few steps more. Oh, Miss Mom. Oh, Miss Mom. They, 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 they say I was very good. In fact, they say that I was putrid. I'm glad to hear that. Two arms. Two arms. The British is coming. What are you talking about? Well, I was in the third act. Third act of what? What I was going to tell you about. I was Paul Revere. You were Paul Revere. They lighten me up. Well, I'll enlighten you up. I'm busy. Hmm. One day somebody will see me dance off this boy and I ain't gonna have to do it. Just... Wait a minute. Uh -huh. I ain't said anything. I ain't said a thing. I ain't with my mouth. This fellow, Paul Revere, wasn't he the guy that roused the neighborhood and told them the British were coming? Didn't you know he was? I ride my horse till death a part of him be. To what? Splendid. Huh? How would you like to be Paul Revere in real life? For ten bucks, I mean. Well, there it is. Mm. Isn't it lovely? Mrs. Estrella's built it for a garage in more optimistic times. Why, it's marvelous. Hmm? I could tell with a glance it's going to be sensational. Oh, that isn't the invention, Miss Arden. That's just the insides from an old phonograph. Oh, of course, how stupid of me. <laughs> well, you see, I've never seen the infernal organs of a phonograph before. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to dark in the room a bit, do you mind? Why, no, go right ahead. This is the invention. Oh, so that's it. My, it looks quite revolutionary. Frankly, it is. Mm. What about all those little uh, things around it? Do you think you'll ever be able to explain it? I'll try to explain it to you a little more fully. I'm afraid I didn't make myself clear outside. Oh, I'm sure it's much clearer now. And I hope it speaks for itself. Yes, uh, let it speak. And you and I can have a nice little talk in the meantime. See, I've synchronized light in motion. The shuttle which controls the light beam revolves at the same rate of speed as the fan blades. They synchronize and become one, which makes it appear that the fan is standing still. But my only trouble now is to stabilize those speeds. Well, that's it. Why, why, it's stupendous. And I can be of great assistance to you. I can't tell you the number of men I've helped to realize themselves. Well, now, say, that's... I don't know how to thank you. Well, don't bother with that now. I've kept you a pretty long time. Not long enough, perhaps. Well, anyway, I, I think we'd better start back to the house. They might think I'd run off with you. Would you, if you had the chance? Well, I... Well, we'll go into that later. Hmm? Reminds me of my first picture, The Farmer's Daughter. Do you remember it? Well, it, it, it sounds familiar. Oh, that's the one where I start out on the farm and then wind up singing in a nightclub. Then disillusioned, I go back to the farm in the end. It was a lovely story. I felt very sincere in it. Mm. I love it. Come on, you girls. Over you go. I wonder who that is. That guy. That's what you get for being famous, Miss Arden. Don't run, 
show him my invention. You have no right to. No right to? What do you think I am, a cigar store Indian? I only wish I'd met a cigar store Indian first. Oh, so that's the way it is, is it? You can take it any way you want and like it. We've never had any Casanovas in our family, and we're not going to start now. What are you trying to tell me, that I fell for... For what? Uh, Miss Arden? If I remember correctly, you called her a hussy. Yes, and you said she was public. Now we're both right. Well, anyway, Bud's old enough to know his own mind. Not in an emergency. You just want to get rid of him, that's all. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I came to you because I thought you were a gentleman, Mr. Morgan. Now that I see you are not, I intend to place this matter in the hands of certain people in Gettysburg who will demand and get immediate action. I tell you again, and you must believe me, Professor Rigby. Miss Arden was out there hunting for Lee Clover. Bah! Bah to you, sir. Nature never made a sweeter woman than Miss Arden. A lady. A lady at birth. A lady now. She comes from one of the finest families. New Guinea. Oh, please, Marcus, you've got to listen to me. This fella Rigby means business. Well, so do I. Please, please be serious. Give him five minutes with the scandal sheets. And you'll hear from A.K. For doing what? Oh, for rolling a hoop, playing jacks with the kiddies. I did nothing. I have a chance for a pleasant little tete-a-tete. -tete. I only borrowed the guy. I know, but, but Rigby is... Oh, after you get through with me, I'm Lucretia Borgio with a cup of poison in each hand and death in every glance. I'm not interested. But you'd better think of your reputation. Oh, you think of it. That's what you're being paid for. Good heavens, what else am I doing? Rigby's in his room right this minute, putting on his other pair of pants, getting ready to go to Gettysburg. Well, stop him. How can I stop him? Steal his pants. Oh, be serious. Mmm, sitting bull. Not bad for a guy that's been sitting all his life. Bob! I'm terribly sorry. Sorry about what, my good man? Yes, yes, to be sure. What? I'll tell you what I'm sorry about, Professor Rigby. I only wish I were you. You what? If I could only... No, no, that couldn't be. I'm her manager. Her manager. Supposedly the finest manager in the world. I don't understand. Why the idea? Why, Crawford Slipingle is one of the finest actors in the world. Crawford Slipingle? He's the man I want her to put in her next picture. But do you know what she said to me? She said that you are the perfect type to play that particular part in her picture. I? No, oh, a thousand pardons, Professor Ripley. She wanted me to come to you and ask you if you'd make a screen test. Splendid actor you probably are. She's usually right, confound it. To be or not to be, that is the question. Long distance. Hello, Washington. Yes, Harrisburg's ready for you now. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello. Ken Harris Hotel. I want to talk to Miss Marvis Arden. Are you the gentleman who left the message early this evening? I'm sorry that Miss Arden isn't here. But hold the wire. I'll see if the desk has any information. Desk clerk, has Miss Arden checked in? No. Say, did you see this? Why? Why, she was kidnapped this afternoon. Can you imagine the nerve kidnapping her in broad daylight? Kidnapped? Kidnapped. Kidnapped! Hello. Hello, operator. Uh, get me the police department. Yes. 
Hello, uh, Bronson. Yeah, sure, the chief of police. Hello. Hello, Bronson. Repeat, Washington police calling all cars, number 817, number 817. The disappearance of Martha Sarden, the motion picture star, has been reported. A town car of foreign make, California license plate, 3W William 5. Number three, W5. Can you beat that? And I seen her only last night in Drifting Lady. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Arden. I'm using it to adjust my invention. But I thought I turned it down low enough so nobody did. Oh, but my dear, I love it. Go right ahead with your work. Well, I... I won't even know you're here. I'm afraid it's kind of chilly down here. You won't catch cold, will you? Cold? I don't know the meaning of the word. At home, I lie about with hardly anything on. Well, I suppose you can get used to hardly anything. <laughs> My, isn't that a divine tune? Don't you adore dancing? Yes, I do. Oh, well, uh, what do you intend doing with it uh, after it's complete? What do I intend to? <laughs> oh, you mean this? Well, I guess the inventor never thinks about that sort of thing. What would you suggest? Oh, I've been seriously thinking about it. The invention, I mean. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it would revolutionize the whole picture business. You really think so? Oh, I know so. But you'll have to take it to Hollywood. <laughs> oh, not a chance. I don't sell enough gasoline out of those pumps of mine to buy a ticket to the state line. But you don't have to. I don't what? I'm going to take you to Hollywood myself. Hey, wait a minute. Yes, I am. I've talked it all over with Mr. Morgan. He thinks it's positively a marvelous idea, and so do I. And I'm going to have you meet all the big executives in Hollywood. Why, they'll just thrill at your invention. Hmm. Why, you'll be making so much money, you won't know what to do with it. Oh, lovely music, isn't it? To Hollywood. You like to dance, honey? Boy, wouldn't that be a break. I do not know it. I... Oh, Aunt Kate, I love Bud, but I'm crazy about him only now. It... But now what? <laughs> My pride. <laughs> your pride? You mean your family's pride? Now, you listen to me. You want Bud, but you're not willing to fight for him. <laughs> I had my chance once, and I was too proud to fight. Even now, when I think about it, it does something to me inside. You've got to work for love, just like we've always got to work to earn a living. And if this woman's got something that's taking him away, you find out what it is and add a little bit to it. If the going gets too tough or sock below the belt, sometimes you just have to do it. Mm. Oh, you like my perfume? Oh, so that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Polly did more, which means uh, speaking of love. No, uh, perfume is a wonderful thing. Why, do you know they make it out of the darndest things? Horses' hooves, potato peelings, and coal tar, and... Why, do you know there are over 600 byproducts of coal tar? Well, I always say science is golden or something like that. You mean silence is golden? Uh, yeah, golden. 18 carat, you know. Mm, more like the music. It does seem a shame to let them...
Flash. Martha Darden, beautiful motion picture actress, was reported kidnapped tonight while en route from Washington, D.C. to Harrisburg on a personal appearance tour. The police have been notified and an intensive search is being conducted for the glamorous star of Drifting Lake. He's a kidnapper. He's a kidnapper. Who's a what? Indian mail. He kidnapped Martha Sarden. It says so over the radio. We've got to get a gun. We've got to get the police at Gettysburg. Come on. Oh, he's kidnapped her. Why don't she say something? Why don't she do something? Well, maybe he threatened her life if he does. Maybe he's going to get arrested in the face. Come on. Well, what do we do? Come on. Come on. I don't know what to do. You're not very romantic, are you, dear? Well, I, I guess I haven't had much time for it. But I feel you could be if you let yourself go. That's what I'm afraid of. You know, honey, it isn't often I get a chance to talk to someone who understands. You don't know. You don't know how I'm suffering for my career. All because Mr. A.K. Greenfield, president of Superfine Pictures Incorporated, loves money. Money, what does it get you? Well, it seems to have gotten you pretty nearly everything a girl could want. Automobile, jewels, and swell clothes. Mm, what do they matter? When I've missed the one thing in all this world that really counts, love. The tender, honest love of some simple man who understands me. And here I've been practically a slave, chained to a five-year contract that forbids me to marry. Slave to AK's greed for gold. Gold. Hmm. It does seem terrible when you put it that way. If only I could meet someone before it's too late. Hmm. Someone like you. Me? Why, you can't mean that I... I'm nobody. I haven't anything. Not a thing. Honey, you've got everything. Everything my dream man needs to make me happy. Do you mean that? Look into my eyes and read the truth. Yes, your eyes. It's sort of hard to tell what color they are. It's like... It's like what? It's like the water in Miller's Pond. In the winter with the sky overhead, it's as blue as, as anything. And in the fall, when the leaves turn, it's sort of gray-brown. In your hair. What about my hair? It reminds me of golden corn tassels waving in the sun. I've never seen hair like it outside a magazine. Oh, I guess I'm talking like a fool. No, you're just a violently sweet man. I'm kind of crazy about you. Do you mean that? Do I? Why? Listening to the music? Hello, oh, hey, Kane. I was just uh, working on my drawings. Well, keep right on working. Miss Arden heard the music and came down to listen to it. Oh, music lover. Well, then, we can all sit down here and enjoy it together. Perhaps we had better turn it off. We seem to be disturbing everybody. Oh, don't. It isn't often we get a chance at any nightlife in this house. <laughs> Maybe you don't give it a chance to develop. Uh, hey, kid, don't you think it's kind of late for you? Not too late, I hope. The night owl serenaders come on at two. You love them, Miss Arden. At two? It's almost that now. Oh. I really must be going. I'm usually in bed at this hour. This must be one of your off nights. I'm beginning to think so. In fact, I'm sure of it. Oh, don't go. Oh, I thought we could have a nice visit while we were listening to the music. I'm sorry. You spoke of cooking at dinner. Have you tried this new way of cooking spinach? You take your spinach. You take your spinach. I don't need any. Good night. Well, Mr. Morgan, what are you going to do about it? If you ask me, I think you've been lying. I think you're in on this scheme to take Bud away just so you can steal his invention. And I say you should mind your own business. If Bud Norton wants to go to Hollywood, let him go. Isn't that so, Mr. Rigby? Well, I... You keep out of this. But Eddie here... I'm talking to Mr. Morgan. Shut up! Now then, Mr. Morgan. Dear Auntie Katie, <laughs> Marvis Arden isn't such a bad sort. If she's a little hard-boiled, well, she's had to be hard-boiled to get where she is. She kept on going up until suddenly she found herself a pampered, glamorous celebrity with the whole world at her feet. It's a wonder she's kept her head as well as she has. Naturally, she's affected sometimes. 
There are darn few of us who wouldn't be. But underneath it all, all the glitter... She has a heart of gold. <laughs> well, I guess I just can't help making a noise like a double truck ad in the movie magazine. But I more than half mean it at that. Come on, Marcus, forget about this fella. It's for your own good. You know you've fallen for him. Well, what about it? Well, aside from the question of your contract, there's Joyce. Oh, I figure that's just a school day romance. I played that part, too. No, it's deeper than that. All right, all right. Don't try to sell it to me. You know that chap's invention probably isn't worth a nickel. Yes, and it might be worth a million. Marcus, this is the first time I've ever known you deliberately to hurt anyone. You're going to break his heart, and you're going to break hers, too. They're crazy about each other. So what? I'm only interested in his invention. Besides, I have a right to my feelings, too. Well, that's different. These two may never be rich or amount to much, but they've got each other. each other and before long well, you don't seem to well, what's that you know what that is Margaret. i don't understand you mean the girl is yes Margaret. this morning she broke down and told me everything mm, some fine goings on around here oh now don't be that way Margaret. we haven't the right to cast the first stone maybe you haven't but i get the right to cast the rock at gibraltar if i want to and I thought she was a simple country girl. But, but she was, Margaret. That was her undoing. They're just babes. Babes in the woods. Ah, well, they should have kept out of the woods. I thought you'd be more understanding than that, Marvis. More, um, do you remember your picture, Purity and the Maiden? Oh, I remember. Why, well, they held it over at Paramount for ten weeks. Well, Joyce reminds me so much of the girl you played in that. A country girl, deceived by her own innocence. Yes, it was a beautiful part. I always felt it had more of the real me in it than anything I've ever done. And do you remember the scene where she meets the man who deceived her? He thinks she's going to ball him up. Instead, she forgives him. She says... Yes, I know, I know. I've learned through pain the joy of perfect understanding because suffering has taught me to be big enough to forgive. I was marvelous in that part. That's because it was the real you speaking, Marvis. And now that you know the truth, the tie that binds this boy and girl together, you can't take him away from her. I ain't taking him away, you and your evil-minded innuendos. I suppose the rest of the world be satisfied to believe the worst of me. I'm afraid so, Margaret. The world is your public. It does seem terrible to sacrifice for his future just because of a lot of foul-minded people. You can still help him. Believe me, I must have a moment or two alone. A moment or two to commute with myself. I know you'll do the decent thing, Marvis. Get out! There ain't been any scandal yet. You can thank me for that. But now, if you let him go without fighting for him, you ought to be trounced with a wet willow branch. There's nothing I can do. It's too late. Oh, fiddlesticks. Mr. Morgan, did she... Did she listen to you this morning? Did she say she would? What she says doesn't mean a thing. It's what she does that counts. She hasn't made a move yet. Well, I'm all ready. Oh, uh, Bud, I'd like to talk to you for just a moment. Why, sure. You 
must be brave, my dear. I won't be able to take you with me to Hollywood after all. Oh. No. Don't look at me with those great bewildered eyes. Yeah. Don't make it too difficult for me. Someday you'll understand, perhaps. But what's happened? I haven't done anything, have mm, I? You haven't done anything, my dear, and nothing's happened, only that our, our little interlude is ended. Oh, what? I mean, it's ended. But I don't understand. Well, you see, I'm a creature of whims, and this plan was one of my mad, mad whims that I've decided to forget. Why, Miss Auden, I... Oh, why, you're taking it so bravely, so splendidly. You must try and forget me. Forget you? How could I? Hmm. Well, if you can't, then remember me kindly for just a brief moment. When April, when October comes around again with its blue skies and sudden showers, remember that strange October woman who drifted into your life as casually as a summer cloud drifts over a green field and then drifts on again. Of course, it is disappointing, but still, I suppose it's the only... Why did break Gladys' sister's heart if her baby didn't get this sweater now? Who did you say? Gladys' sister. She's got the cutest baby you ever saw. Well, Mamas, we're all ready. What do you mean, kidnapper? I'm a press agent, you fools. Listen, tell these fellas who I am. With pleasure. Why, he's a wolf in wolf's clothing. That's enough for me, ma'am. All right, take him out. Thank heaven I found you in time, Marvis. He'll pay for this. Kidnapping is a federal offense, and if he doesn't hang, it'll surprise me. Hang? You mean they really believe he kidnapped me? Oh, didn't he? Why, no, I thought this was a joke. We were paying him back with one of his own tricks. Uh, just a minute, officers. I'd like to explain. You don't have to explain anything to me now. What a chump I have now been. Now listen, Morgan. Don't Morgan me. I'm through with your press agent. I wasn't checking and double-checking on you just because I was loyal to AK. Well, maybe I was when I first took the job, but... I got to like you because I thought you had some feeling. Then I found I liked you even more because you didn't. Oh, you did, huh? Hmm. Oh, uh, do you boys mind stepping inside for just a moment? Now listen, Holly. You'll probably laugh at me when I tell you, Josh, but... What, boy? I believe she had a case on me. What's your name? Mrs. Struthers. What kind of a place is this? made to kiss. Mm, that's what I use it for. But for me only. From now on, there'll be no other men. Why? <laughs> men of my life. <laughs> oh, yeah? A.K. shall hear of this, I promise you. Oh, 